talk about the D7 visa in Portugal, which is one of the most popular schemes that has come of age since 2007 and has been very popular with people coming from the United States of America. However, this visa is definitely available for everybody else who is living within a non-EU country. So if you are looking to move to Portugal and you have some passive income or you just retired, then this information is for you. If it's not for you, please go ahead and share this video with someone who can benefit from it. And obviously like this video, it helps this channel and let's keep growing this community. Now the Portuguese D7 visa or rather what they call the retirement visa is one of those visas where if you're retired or if you are an entrepreneur who is receiving money from outside Portugal or you have dividends or you are have invested in real estate or you have equitable profits and so on and all this is coming from outside Portugal then you're eligible to apply for a D7 visa and what they usually say is that you need to have a minimum of 820 euros per month for you to qualify for this type of visa. Now this type of visa is one of those which also allows you to come in and relocate with your family, which means that you can do a family reunification and also sets you on a path towards permanent residency, as well as in the long run, citizenship if your country also allows dual citizenship. So you can do your research and check out on that. Now, why the D7 visa? The D7 visa comes in with lots of benefits. One obviously is the fact that you are able to access the European continent uh, the, within the Schengen area. You can be able to travel across Europe using this visa. You can also be able to have the benefits of the country in Portugal, which includes the healthcare system, the school system. You can also be able to benefit from the lower tax. However, this has recently changed because they recently scrapped off the NHR, which used to mean that if you come to Portugal, then you pay a much lower tax for a period of 10 years however this has been scrapped but is also very much valid for some individuals for which i will leave a link for you to check uh, which type of individuals can still apply for an nhr until 2025 march or thereabout in 2025. now you can also be able to benefit from citizenship after five years of legal residency and also have your family join you in portugal and create a new life right here now for a d7 visa one of the things that they also check is the fact that you need to have your uh, criminal record as a certificate correct so which means that you need to for instance if you're listening to this and you're in kenya you do need to get your good conduct certificate you need to have the financial proof of course your passport has to come in handy your application the d7 form and also make sure that all these documents are well attested ahead of time such that you can be able to send them and begin the process of applying for this d7 visa it's really that simple you do not even need any agent this is something that you can do it by yourself so the d7 visa usually the process of getting the visa can take anything between uh, four weeks all the way to several months this is obviously dependent on the consulate the portuguese consulate i've had several of you asking why they are taking so long uh, with the appointments recently there was a big change that uh, came about where the immigration changed from the old self what they call self and now they call it aima and within the spirit of changes there has been quite a lot of delays with appointments and delays with the processing of residence cards and so on and so forth so please check with your portuguese consulate in your own home country to see exactly what would be your process now i know for some kenyans obviously who are listening to this and have tried to process their d-type visa 
Kwanzaa recently, they have had to go to Maputo themselves in person to do this process. This is something that has changed very recently and one thing I can tell you is to please email the consulate in Maputo to see exactly what your process would be because especially for someone like a student who is coming on a D-type visa, then they can basically just send their documents via DHL. However, if you are maybe looking to apply for things like a job seeker visa or this D7 visa, you might be required to actually go in person to Maputo. So what I would say is email them, send them a, a quick email and ask exactly what your process is going to look like so that you can prepare ahead of time. Now going back to the process of the D7 visa usually takes quite a period of time and you also do need to show that you have your accommodation in place in Portugal which means that you would need a lease agreement with a landlord in Portugal and you also need to show that you can and be able to also take care of the family members that might be joining you which means that you also need to show that you have the financial means to take care of your uh, family this includes the immediate family this includes your uh, parents your spouse your children and so on and so forth so this takes quite a bit of time honestly so please give it some patience and usually what happens is that once you send in your documents or once you go to your interview in your consulate, then they would be able to take all the documents and uh, analyze the documents. And then if it's a yes, then they would definitely process that for you. And they will give you your visa for which you do have four months to show up in Portugal. And once you show up in Portugal, you need to register with AIMA, which is the immigration agency, and then you can be able to begin the process of your residence permit. Now, once you get your residence permit, it's usually valid for two years, after which you renew it. And by the time you hit the fifth mark, of living in Portugal, then you can be able to register to get your citizenship or your permanent residency depending on your country of origin and what it allows and what it does not. Now, the other thing that you also need to notice is that you do need to be present in Portugal for at least a period of 183 days because you would need to be paying taxes here and also show that you know you've been living here, you have a legal residency and so that by the time you're also applying for this citizenship then these documents are in place now if you think that maybe the d7 visa might be a bit technical for you then there is an opportunity also for a d8 visa with which is the digital nomad visa now this digital nomad visa usually is one of those visas that allows you again if you have a job that is maybe rem a, a remote job and you at least make four times the minimum salary of Portugal, so that would be 820 times four, then you would be able to also apply for a D8 visa that allows you to come and stay in Portugal for a period of 12 months. One thing you need to realize, however, is that the D8 visa might not allow you to have what they call the family reunification. And it means that you would also have a period of 12 months that is basically one year for which you can renew it and you can check whether you're eligible to actually renew this visa. So please check that out. The D7 visa as well as the D8 visa are some of the schemes that allow uh, foreigners to easily access Portugal and be able to live in this country as well as work and do their other economic activities and they have been very very vibrant however please note that the process can take several months before that visa is processed so if you're thinking for instance to move to portugal sometime next year say in january you should already begin that process as soon as now because it's going to take a bit of time it's going to take also a bit of time to make sure that all your documents are correct your bank statements your passport your criminal record certificate all these nitty gritties need to be checked ahead of time so that by the time you're showing up for your interview at the consulate, 
then you have all the documents in place. A lot has changed in Portugal as you may already have seen on the news for instance, the Manifesto Saudi interest that has changed very recently where we used to have people who come in into Portugal and you get a job contract, you pay your social security, you pay the taxes, ETC, and then you appear to the immigration and prove this and then you are able to go in, into the system, you are assimilated into the system as a resident. Now, this has recently changed and the process has uh, changed over to the extent that you you do need to apply for perhaps like a job seeker visa or maybe a D1 visa if you have found a job here or maybe you are coming by the tech visa scheme. It is no longer as easy to change even from a tourist visa to a work permit. So these are things that are tightening up. So please make sure that you also do your own research depending on what your end goal is such that you're very well informed and you're not just reading stuff online sometimes I get several messages where people have been duped by agencies and all these kind of things some of these things are processes that you can actually do by yourself you just need to read a little bit online and get to do your own research and then obviously listen to such videos so that you can be able to understand exactly what to expect and then do it by yourself I hope this video has helped you to a certain extent and please make sure that you can join my membership because usually in my membership I am able to give you a one-on-one -on -one if you request for it and you are able to access these videos uh, ahead of time and you can also schedule a consultation or which is discounted with me so please go ahead and join my membership reach out to me on my email and I'll be more than happy to interact with you and give you all the information that I am aware about I hope you like this video share it and until next time, bye!